Welcome, Welcome back. back! So, as we've been planning our food forest and the upcoming growing season, we've been doing a lot of research into how to do it uh, in harmony with Mother Nature. In this video, we will dive in and talk about how different uh, branches of Tree of Life all contribute to nutrient cycling and how that comes into play when we are designing a food forest or a, a resilient food system mm -hmm. that will last for generations to come. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned! So it's been almost a year since we've uh, been here at Blahadatne and observing the ins and outs of, of everything um, and yeah, starting our work on our, our diversified orchard. We would love to give a huge shout out to Kim Watt from Thimble Hill Nursery. Uh, she put together an amazing workshop and course that we signed up for um, to do with food forests and, um, and it's been incredible. We've been learning so much. Um, and the extra, I mean, the extra bonus that thing about the course is that a lot of the people that are taking the course are from the West Kootenai. So they're local people with local knowledge and all sorts of different levels of skill set. So we've been learning so much, not only from Kim and her workshop, but from all the other farmers participating. So, um, and cause it's all this local knowledge. Um, it's been just invaluable. So that's been really, really helpful in, in the design of, of our future fruit, fruit food forest, <laughs> future food forest. One of the things that became apparent while we were taking the course with Kim, even though it wasn't explicitly mentioned, uh, is that how all the different forms of life um, participate in nutrient cycling. It's really just amazing to think about how all these different life forms, uh, they all passing nutrients around and helping to cycle nutrients and basically increasing by increasing the biodiversity, we're increasing the capacity of the system mm -hmm. to produce. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, to, and heal itself too, exactly, right? yeah. regenerate. Make a very resilient and regenerative mm. system. So very interesting stuff and we want to start even just dive into it a little bit. I mean, yeah. it's a huge topic, yeah. but we want to dive into that. But before that, we should talk about why uh, in first place, we want to create a system that doesn't rely on external mm -hmm. inputs, mm -hmm. right? Because I mean, there, there's a lot of agricultural systems out there that are producing a lot of food, mm -hmm. but uh, they're doing so by bringing in a lot of external inputs, external inputs into the system. Yeah, right? like manure and and things like that. Yeah, fertilizer, pesticides, mm -hmm, herbicides. Mm -hmm. They bring in all sorts of things to try to push the system to produce larger volumes. Mm -hmm. So farming didn't always require um, all this external input. So for thousands of years, um, people farmed and provided food for their communities, uh, for themselves and their villages. Um, w without the need of external inputs. Mm -hmm. as, so as food uh, production became more industrial and colonization took its grip on the different communities, people started pr trying to produce more and more food mm -hmm. as opposed to creating food systems that were healthy and thinking about the future generations. So we started depleting the soil and as a result, uh, relying more heavily on external inputs. So then mm -hmm. using fertilizer and other external input just became normal and it's it was more or less expected if you're doing any kind of agricultural venture, you would start by adding fertilizer to the soil. Yeah. Uh, but we almost have to go the opposite way. Yeah. Right? Definitely. This, this is something we have to backtrack because this, you know, there's no Unborn. way forward. Yeah, because we know about like how did the Dukabors? Yeah, uh, I mean, Dukabor villages, this? they were able to grow food for their communities without uh, relying on external inputs such as fertilizer and things like this. Um, they did keep animals for such, such as chickens for eggs and the milk cows for, mm -hmm. for milk to make cheese and sour cream. But sometimes those, um, the, the inputs from those animals, the manure and the excess hay, uh, things like this, weren't enough to provide nutrition for the soil. Right, because we read in, there's a particular example. Yes. We, we recently read a really amazing book, The Castigata Confluence. Mm -hmm. Really good if you're a local person. Yeah. But there's an article there by Vai Plotnikov. Then she mentions it specifically. There was a village in Kristova mm -hmm. that um, they think the reason they didn't thrive was that because they weren't using enough um, animals to integrate into the system, integrate into the system to help with nutrient cycling. Right. So yeah. that was one of the ways. But there's, of course, many different techniques that they use to help um, cycle nutri nutrients Definitely. and then keep the soil healthy. It's always good. I mean, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket anyway. Mm -hmm. The best way to have a healthy system is to have this mix of, 
of inputs and yeah again a healthy ecosystem <laughs> so yeah let's dive a little bit more into what are these different branches of life so mm. we uh, we will uh, talk about each branch and then we'll give you examples of how that helps with nutrient cycling first of all plants themselves they contribute um, heavily to nutrient cycling. <laughs> They're building biomass and there are many ways that we can you know, incorporate um, this into the design of an orchard. Uh, for example, techniques like chop and drop or coppicing, which is basically cutting uh, a plant all the way down uh, to the ground level and letting it regrow. Many plants allow this to happen and by doing this we can uh, bring the nutrient and biomass back on top of the soil and then allow other organisms to capture that and then bring it down into the soil. Yeah, and it's important to have the uh, different plants on your, in, on your land. So mm. different plants have different root depths with, which can access different layers of nutrients and, um, and organisms that live in the soil. So mm. again, mimicking nature, you have all these different layers mm -hmm. um, that they thrive for a reason. So yeah. You know, even though it's really great to have cover crops, mm -hmm. but having mm -hmm. just one type of cover crop on a huge field right. is not really a long-term solution because right. you're always hitting the same level in the soil. You're not really going yeah, to different, accessing yeah, different so you, depth. So incorporating perennial cover crops is something we will talk about mm -hmm. in depth in our future video. Mm -hmm. It's also, again, in, in, important to um, incorporate nitrogen fixing plants. Mm. So again, the, using same techniques as that. Um, yeah. Um, you know, yeah, again, coppicing, nitrogen fixing plants releases nitrogen into the soil. Mm -hmm. um, that's a really good segue to jump into actually mm -hmm. the next type of mm -hmm. branch of life because the plants themselves actually even though we say many plants are nitrogen fixers plants themselves do not have an ability to fix nitrogen mm -hmm. um, plants or fungi uh, they cannot themselves um, on their own on their own mm -hmm. they cannot fix any mm -hmm. nitrogen so we found that it's not the plants themselves or the fungus themselves that are actually fixing nitrogen in the soil. Um, there are organisms in the Monera kingdom. Very, very, very cool. Uh, they, them, they are the ones that have the relationships with plants and, and um, fungi and can fix the atmospheric nitrogen uh, in the soil. Mm -hmm. So yeah, very, very important little guys. Yeah, it, it's pretty amazing. The, type of uh, symbiotic relationship that the different branches of life are all mm -hmm. formed with each other mm -hmm. to help um, it's you know there is uh, it just blows my mind to think about you know the organism just gives to the other, another organism yeah. and there's no way to s secure that you know there's gonna be a return but you know at the end it all works out you yeah. know they, they all the organisms um, it seems like they're almost they're operating with this abundance mentality which is almost the opposite of what your thought is that you always think that organisms are trying to compete with each other so much but in reality like most of the energy um, is um, to help with this nutrient mm -hmm. cycling and um, at the end it kind of all supports each other mm -hmm. that's with uh, nutrient fixing plants they have a direct relationship with these single cell um, organisms mm -hmm. but what about the plants that are not nitrogen fixers how do they actually oh. obtain the nut nutrients because you know they exist and they, they thrive everywhere right so what's happening there this is when one of our favorite groups, to their, it's their time to shine, Mr. Fungi. <laughs> so yeah, uh, fungi. Fungi are critical to the, to the ecosystem. Um, we're lucky here to have many varieties. Uh, we've been learning so much about them. We took a, a mushroom course, how to propagate our own fungi, um, and a couple courses just related to, to mushrooms and fungus. Um, but yeah, so they're very, very important um, in, in this whole ecosystem. Yeah, and what's really interesting is their, the important role that um, the uh, fungi play in the food system in the soil. Mm -hmm. Because there is a specific type of fungi um, mm -hmm. in the research they talk about, um, you know, they abbreviate it as AM or AMF. Mm -hmm. um, the mycelium actually, which is the network that the fungi grows under the soil it actually penetrates the wall cell yeah. of the plant and yeah. extends the root system which is crazy it's cra I can't yeah it's like it. attaches itself to the plant yeah. and you think this would be a parasitic right. relationship uh, because in exchange the tree actually provides uh, carbon which the fungus cannot actually obtain by itself <laughs> so it, it's just it's crazy it's amazing yeah yeah it really is beautiful that's the only way yeah yeah describe. no fungus can as far as we know and the research that we looked at they mm -hmm. cannot fix atmospheric nitrogen by themselves mm -hmm. even though for a long time people believed because they saw presence of mycelium um, resulted in healthier trees they assumed mm -hmm. that you know the mycelium was helping with nitrogen fixation but now we know 
that they cannot. Mm -hmm. And so the way they do this is uh, the mycelium uh, or the fungus, they play a, a sort of a middleman role. They actually do trade between the plant but also with the bacteria. Mm -hmm. So they have a relationship with the nitrogen fixing bacteria. They create those, um, they, they make their own trade with them, obtain the nitrogen that the bacteria fixes from the atmosphere, atmosphere, and then they take that to the tree and exchange that for carbon. It, it's just crazy. Like, yeah. how do you even come up with that? But, <laughs> but yeah, so that's what's happening under the soil in a healthy system. Mm -hmm. And that's really, you know, what we want to try to create here. Right. Yeah, a healthy system. That's mm -hmm. key. But there is also another branch of tree of life that exists under the soil there is yeah, yeah. there's another branch um protists so they're another uh, microorganism that lives in the soil and contributes big time to again to nutrient cycling and making nutrients available mm -hmm. that's and that's a whole nother thing too so we yeah. won't get too deep into that today and there, uh, what we found is the research on that is also very recent yeah so for a yeah, long time they ignored the protests in the models for nutrient cycling yes. which is crazy now they're finding that you know they're one of the most diverse mm -hmm. uh, forms of life and so we're just learning about them yeah next uh, branch on the tree of life uh is is a, a very large one as well um or animals mm -hmm. so animals can range from the smallest um arthropod to the biggest moose um all the wild animals as well as livestock and if managed correctly, so like moving your livestock uh, throughout your system uh, through the growing season, the manure could be spread throughout your system um, and a as well as um, spreading their food waste from eating. But it's important to note that um, uh, the livestock or animals don't directly contribute nutrients to the system. They contribute the manure and the food waste, mm -hmm. but it's actually the soil organisms that are critical in breaking all that down and, um, and uh, allowing the nutrients to be available for, um, for the plants to take to, to, mm -hmm. to uptake and create that healthy soil. So, so it is critical to provide that food for the, um, the soil organisms, very important, but it's not, they're not providing nutrients directly. They need that healthy soil um, to be able to uh, uh, let those nutrients be available for plants. So mm -hmm. that's uh, that's important. Yeah, and, and I mean and animals are again They're great at um, Say uh, in a farm setting if you have chickens around they're great at uh, keeping insect populations in check and mm. and um, and eating down if you're trying to clear land, it's great to um, for the animals to eat the bushes, shrubs, or any any plants that you don't mm. quite want in your systems, like knapweed, things like this, um, mm. so that it provides the space for you to plant native plants or, mm. or plants that'll help yeah. contribute to your exactly. food forest, right? Yeah, yeah. work toward creating a more abundant system. Yeah, and I'm, more diversified. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's really of important. course, we shouldn't forget ourselves, you know, we are animals too, and yeah. we are also supposed to be participating in nutrient mm -hmm. cycling. And that's, the, that's what makes us the happiest, is to be able to grow uh, healthy, uh, food systems and by doing this you know not only we are we are thriving but also nature is thriving right? mm -hmm. so one of the best ecosystems that people can thrive in is the that forest edge yeah you know, we're really good at managing forest edge so uh, you know we're not all that bad you know we're not always destroying you hear a lot about like people are destroying everything people are like ruining everything but you know we can also be a really good force mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh, you know we play a really key role in increasing biodiversity at the edge of the forest and that's where we are exactly here at Balaadana yeah. it's right at the edge really of the forest lucky. between the river and the forest and you know we hoping you know if our vision can come true we can have a really biodiverse and abundant system here mm -hmm. now that we're starting to learn about all of these different contribution from different life forms and there's so much more to learn but even now uh, we're starting to see a lot of patterns and we mm -hmm. influencing our design so how are we taking this information and you know helping or improving our design for an orchard yeah well I mean we're definitely uh, minimizing external inputs as much as we possibly can um, and and creating systems that uh, we don't disturb the soil so mm -hmm. perennial systems um, where we are not tilling and, and disturbing the soil because this again we want to create healthy fungal ecosystems mm -hmm. and um, and soil disturbance they're, they're not fans of that so mm -hmm. yeah yeah, that, it's very interesting. Again, uh, I remember a quote from the book that we read, uh, mm. the Confluence, that the Dukovors, they um, practice something called uh, double cropping. Because uh -huh. right? I think it's also called alley cropping in some other literature. Yeah. But they, they knew about this. And, you know, right away they needed to feed themselves. So right away they had to break the ground and produce food in like 45 days. Right. But um, 
they had this vision for a long time and right away they start planting perennials mm -hmm. and by you know um, taking care of those perennial plants uh, over you know over the years they create more and more resilient food system mm -hmm. so that's definitely something that we're incorporating yes, in our design as well big time of course another point now is that we don't apply any uh, anything that will kill any of the form of biology right exactly right? trying to keep all parts of the biology in the system healthy mm -hmm. so yeah no fungicide which I don't know how, how why people were doing that before yeah. Oy. Um, yeah, no fungicide, herbicide, things like this. You have to work work with your system. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope that information was useful. We are again at the beginning of our research. If you know yeah. any information that you want to share with us, uh, we really appreciate it. Um, you know, we are really trying to uh, do a good job in observing and learning and trying mm -hmm. to create the best system possible here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we could have talked for hours and hours yeah. about all this stuff. There's so much more to talk about <laughs> and know. But well, we should also give a farm system. update, I think. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's been, been, yeah, yeah, it's been <laughs> a lot of changes this time of year on the farm. So yeah. we started uh, getting our first duck and chicken eggs. I think oh, yeah. the ducks started laying um, end of January, which is they, it was three weeks earlier than they normally start laying. So happy, happy ducks. Um, so that's exciting. They're laying, yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. And the chickens started laying um, near the end of January as well. So that's exciting. Now we can finally um, finally eat um, yeah. chicken e or bird eggs, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and the eggs are for us and the close family yeah. and friends. Um, yeah. We're not really doing it at any commercial scale or anything. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. It's and just for our own. Again, we're yeah. trying to live off the land. So um, yeah. this is our, our protein source now. So it's and great. we don't we don't use light, uh, so they take no. a, they they take extended break over the winter. Exactly, we don't we don't force them or anything. So yeah. anyway, so happy birds, and then also um, again sheep. Oh lambs! <laughs> yeah, lambs. So, so sheep lambs. again in their own time. Oh, yeah. I had everything all every all my dates all good to go, and of course the sheep proved me wrong. So we started lambing a month earlier than normal. Um, we had a, a bunch more girls drop lambs. So um, yeah, and there's quite a bit more to come. Um, but that's been keeping yeah. us pretty busy um, but so far everyone's happy healthy bouncing around they're loving this weather like everybody loving this warm weather um, it's been fabulous for for everybody uh, yeah. yeah so those are that's I think those are the most exciting uh, yeah. yeah and I mean this warm weather is also uh, um, providing an opportunity to start uh, collecting cyan wood mm -hmm. and cuttings. So we'll talk a lot more next week about how we're starting to collect cyan wood and cuttings mm -hmm. and uh, the next steps in the orchard design. Um, oh, one more thing, because we've been making uh, the videos with the Dukobor culture in mind, mm. um, yeah, because we want to b dive a lot deeper into some of those videos um, when we talk, we get a chance to talk to elders. Yeah. Uh, and we know, you know, we have some people that are already watching that may not be as interested, they might be more interested in the design, mm -hmm. um, the orchard design and, and food forest topics. So what we decided to do is we're going to create another channel mm -hmm. and in that channel we're going to extensively focus on Dukubur culture yeah. and share our learnings because we're just at the beginning of our journey. And so we're calling that one Dukubur Doings and <laughs> I will put a link in the description and also we'll, we'll share it with you again probably next video. Um, so if you're interested, uh, uh, as soon as we have that launched, uh, please subscribe and mm -hmm. so that we can uh, also reach you through that. So if you're interested in the Dukover culture, you need to subscribe to that new channel. Uh, we will remind you again. <laughs> uh, this channel, we will focus on food forest design, what we're learning about living off the land and all those topics. Farm life. Farm, yeah. yeah, all those yeah. topics. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for watching another video and uh, leave a comment if you can. We really appreciate it and we'll see you hopefully soon. Bye. Bye.